The best headgear in Elden Ring is always a hot topic of discussion. My favorite though, the iconic pumpkin head. But what character could I make to justify wearing this hearty helmet? On my quest to find the most fun character in Elden Ring, I decided to make pumpkins scream in the dead of night as Jack Skellington. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. To give me money, join me on Patreon. And to get this done before Thanksgiving, let's get started now. We start off as a prophet, but since I know I'm going to be putting a pumpkin on my head, I don't have to do character creation. Great, I don't like doing character creation. We cowabunga into limb, grave, can't be a skeleton if we don't die, right? This mall Santa sells us a crafting kit and some pots to make a jack-o'-lantern. Unfortunately, his armor set isn't in the game. Maybe we'll get Wandering Nomad Land DLC and I can actually make Santa someday. After getting a horse from Kyrie Kingdom Hearts, we head right for our head. There's a mad pumpkin head on the Saint's Bridge. Is he a saint? This is his bridge, I guess. He smashed a statue of a saint? Maybe that's it? It's got a smithing stone inside? Another great example of subtle gameplay hints that you can break these statues by baiting heavy enemies into hitting them. I'm rambling because it's harvest season. We need to farm. There's roughly a 1 in 33 chance for the helmet to drop. 1 in 20 if I went to get the silver feet, but that's kind of far away. I'd rather just get started. I died twice, but we actually got it on attempt number 9. That's really good luck for god dang once. Part of me expected this to be a full section of the script. Time to run a few early errands. Obviously, we want to go to the Third Church of America for the Physic Flask, then grab a better Physic tier from under the Minor Christmas Tree. Stamina and Charged Attack Boost specifically. Honestly though, we're going to be more of a caster. Neither of those tiers are useful either. Sally comes and gives us some meaty dogs, but the dog I want is a lot more dead. At least we can use the bell later. I remembered to grab the Limgrave Pickle before diving into the Jack's Lament Peninsula, where we buy another pot and trick a Headless Horseman into killing itself. We did that in the Leonardo run as well. Still don't know what I did, but hey, first boss dead. Well, that was a freebie. After scooping up a couple of sacred tears and some grave glove warts from the Tomb Sword Catacombs, we'll fight a boss intentionally for some physic tears I might actually use. The Christmas tree avatar is really easy with our pumpkin flame. If you're making a character that uses fire, always body some avatars early. Their patterns are easy to dodge once you get the rhythm, and they take twice as much damage from fire. Our reward is the Crimson Burst tier for regen, and the Bubble tier for one free hit. Very fitting for a living dead boy. Now I'd like to get suited up, and since Santa's outfit isn't an option, we'll go for some pinstripes. Pinstripes also aren't really an option, so just all black everything. The outfit I want is locked in the Murkwater Cave, so we need to take out Nerd Juice and his bloody knives. Doesn't go well for us. Knives are great at carving pumpkins, but attempt number two, I figured out he'd just run into the flame if I cast it a little bit early. I'm still not good at fighting NPCs, but maybe I'm learning. Patches goes pretty smoothly, so I think I might be getting better. And we get the leather set, our first set of black armor. Honestly, doesn't look that great. We'll get a better option later. For something that does look great, look at the profile pic on the menu. The pumpkin head is legendary. No notes. I died falling off a cliff on the way to Caleb, just wasn't paying attention. But there, we can buy another pumpkin to make a bomb with, and more importantly, head into the Aeonian Swamp for the rotten straight ashes of war. This is a single ghost dog whose skin has all rotted off. He's so ugly. I love him. But pets are expensive. Apparently, they're expected to pay pet rent. Let's go get paid. I got nothing in my pockets. Tell me, baby, do you judge me? I got money problems. Kyrie takes us to the Radiant Garden Castle. We'll come back here throughout the run. For now, I just want another pumpkin to bomb with and the poison weapon spell. Fake Nightmare Before Christmas fans might not know what that's for, but the true diehards of the NBC EU know that the soul robber comes from the PS2 game Oogie's Revenge. Poison weapon is inside an invisible scarab in the Aeonian Swamp, and God, these things are annoying. Everyone has given me their favorite contradicting tips to handle them. I'm just bad at it. It's gonna take a few minutes every time. I'm sorry. There's another pumpkin near this Christmas tree in Caled, and a putrid Christmas tree as well. Remember how easy that Christmas tree avatar was? Well, this one's only slightly harder, because it's got tree poop. Sap? Is sap tree poop or tree blood? Who knows? It's dead, and it gives us the flame shroud and cracked tier, boosting our fire damage by 20%, so our pumpkin flames will be hotter. In the abandoned cave, there are some more bosses that are weak to fire, the clean rot knights. They're not actually immune to scarlet rot, so I brought out Zero. He still dies before he applies it. He is a ghost dog. It makes sense that he's good at playing dead. I killed the first knight, then started throwing fireballs with the second one, but that meant we were trading with the destructo discs. It was better to just let her catch these hands. These hands are flames, so she's 
is catching the flames and we win. Golden Scarab acquired, meaning that we're going to get 20% more runes every time we kill stuff. It's really important for this run. Jack is an expensive boy. Our soul robber is in Castle Morn. We passed another pumpkin head, climbed some ladders, and dropped down a room full of rats. Didn't want to get ganked, so I baited them outside, then went back in for the whip. We'll be using it a lot more than we did with Wonder Woman. Now we have a soul robber after we pair that with the poison weapon, so let's go get some real farming done. Through the grail warp, I grabbed a memory stone from Lenny's Rise, but forgot to get the grace. Turns out, you can't jump down to the spirit spring. I died. Ford Faroth grace, I grabbed the Decknus Medallion 1 and Radigan Sword Seal. I'll probably just sell it, then we start whipping dragon ass. According to chat, several people on Tumblr would pay good money for Jack Skellington to whip their ass. The poison just isn't fast enough, so I bailed to go get the spiked Cestus. In Kingdom Hearts, his basic weapon is a set of claws. It checks out. We're only using it for the dragon, I promise. On the way back, I grabbed the Somberstone 8 and 9 for later, and his health reset, so we had to start over. Now, oh well, bleed is still faster than poison. Since we have the Golden Scarab, we actually get more runes than we normally do from this dragon boy. Even more early farming. There's a putrid Christmas tree avatar in Grail that drops a ton of runes. We did run out of magic because it has a lot more HP, so we had to use pumpkin bombs for the end. I'm glad I actually got to use them, even if they are worse than the basic catch flame profits start off with. Again, if you start with fire, do the putrid avatar, clean rot knight, putrid avatar, Oreo. You'll be level 50 so fast. Now imagine Jack Skellington in Fort Height. I just grabbed the Dex's medallion half and got the hell out of there. We're actually going to use it this time because the magma worm in the ruin strewn precipice resists fire damage by 80% and that doesn't sound fun. Margit should be pretty fun. We can summon Donald Duck to help us out, then get busy with the Soul Reaper and catch Flame. He dies pretty fast, we get another pocket. After killing Gostok for an extra silver pickle, we head to Lernia, grabbing a sacred tear on the way. I quickly pull the two fingers out of my hole, blow up some poison turd monsters because it looks rad as hell, and grab the dexterity physic tier and a few rounds of stones. But there's something more important here, the Deathrite Bird. This dude drops a spell that will summon a bunch of spooky skeletons. But he sucks? Like he just hits way too hard and has such a weird body that's hard to hit. He flies away and spams these big AoEs of frostbite. The first time I fought him, I just decided to run away because it wasn't gonna work. The second time, I wasn't so lucky. I died. Worth noting, both the fire attack and the stick attacks add frostbite, which deals a big chunk of your health and lowers your damage resistance. Third time, I didn't actually die. But thinking I died got me killed. Wild. That's going to be it for us. Let's see if someone's playing a game. We can raid into them. Let's see here. No. All right. We're just going to call it then. All right, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, wait, I'm alive. We actually don't have enough intelligence or faith at the moment to cast the spell he drops. So let's go kill something easier. Maybe some trick-or-treaters. <laughs> Climbing up the ruin strewn precipice will give us enough smithing stones to level up our soul robber to plus 13 and get us into Altus. It's also always a good time for making fire miners explode. Killing these miners will be good practice for lock, shock, and barrel later. Once we get to the top, we level the soul robber, then start fighting the magma worm. Zero dies instantly. Bosses with AoE attacks are going to kill the dog faster than chocolate. A stance break with the whip is basically useless, but since ours is coated in poison, it's actually a good time to get the status effect on. We finish off the magma worm pretty quickly by whipping it between the legs. Tumblr is feeling sweaty right now, I'm sure. For now, the only thing I need from Altus is the Golden Order Seal, which scales up with intelligence and faith. We used it last week with Wonder Woman, and used a whip, too. I wouldn't think these two would have so much in common. I'll be the first to write Diana slash Jack on AO3. More smithing stone fives in the Celia Tunnel, and some stones from the Falling Star Beast as well. He has a whip attached to his butt, but we attach our whip to his butt till I realize fire is probably better, and use that to cook an alien bull. Back to Altus, we get the last smithing stone fives we need from the Altus Tunnel and fight the Crystallians. I didn't really need to, but we're tight on runes this run. I'm fighting every boss I can, including the Tibian Mariner in Altus outside the Windham Catacombs. He thinks he's the ruler of the skeletons. We are not going to stand by a pretender to the throne. The real treats of the area are inside the Windham Catacombs. Just avoid the spiky ceiling trap, pull the lever, and fight the Erdtree Burial Watchdog. It drops the Grave Glove Wart Bell bearing one, which will let us buy ones, twos, and threes to level up zero, and there are fours and fives inside the catacombs. Hopefully he'll die less now. After getting the Halig Tree Medallion, Barrel comes to kill us. He's apparently working for the two-faced mayor. I thought he was our friend. How could he be so two-faced? Oh yeah, that's right. And she's really easy and gives us a bonier body. Shock has much more intensive defenses. First, we need the keys to her castle. She invested in real estate and put the Haida key in a rock that's guarded by a dragon. Honestly, real girl boss move. For some reason, with the longest weapon in the game, we miss Smarag's head from horseback, just whiffing over and 
over again. It's a bummer. Our dog dies. Also a bummer. Finally, we get a stance break and just catch Flame the face. Whip scant crit. Third bummer. No death though. First try dragon. Into the castle, we avoid some dogs, grab a ritual pup we won't end up using, and fight the red wolf of Radagon. I summoned zero. It's dog fighting. Feels pretty bad. Obviously, I'm also hitting the dog. That doesn't make it better. Despite the poison whip, we don't get the poison. Red wolf has very high resistances to compensate for its very low health. The low health makes it easy to kill. With that, we can go upstairs and grab the Radigan icon, which boosts the casting speed of spells. Very important for later. Moongrum is gatekeeping upstairs. That's a third bodyguard for shock. This one better be the last one. Whips are great for this fight, since they kind of ignore shields. Bye, Moongrum. Shock does have more bodyguards. What a shocker. It's a slew of brainwashed trick-or-treaters trying to throw books at us. We hit them with the soul robber, then get her with the catch flame and summon zero for phase two. It's great to get a rhythm with the dog that just doesn't let her attack. Spirit summons are great. Unfortunately, Shock agrees and summons a dragon, then a giant. At the same time? I don't know if you're allowed to do that. Apparently, she is, because after the dragon goes away, she brings out the Bloodhound Knight at the same time. Somehow, the dog and I pull through. He's such a good boy. I should keep training him. Can you teach an old dog tricks? First, I'd like to go underground, so let's go to Jaren's party and fight Thanos. There, we can team up with, uh, one of the gargoyles from Notre Dame, Wolf Guy from Zootopia, and Rapunzel from Frozen. Two of the gravity arrows hit us right away. Really bad start. I poisoned the whip and was able to get the effect off once we broke his stance. It's all we can do. Whips are bad. After he jumps up, we summon Witch Hunter Jaren Carter, then just sort of let the poison do its thing by running away. Unfortunately, I took an L after trying to go back in. Just waiting for the poison to kill him wouldn't have been fun, you know? Attempt two, I was able to avoid the gravity arrows, so it's pretty much the same opening after we get the poison on a stance break, but better because we didn't get hit. After that, I switch it up and start using my pumpkin fire. He hops up, then hops down and knocked me on my ass. I thought I was dead, but I learned from that death right bird earlier. I'm not dead until the screen says I am. We ran out of magic, but we were able to finish things off with the soul robber. Let's go do the Sally quest. Run up, carry a manor, make Merida from Brave catch these flames, then talk to Sally, head to Nakron and fight another pretender to the pumpkin throne, the Mimic Tear. Zero activates the rot really fast and gives me a great idea. Get the Servants of Rot's Exaltation. Rest of the fight is easy. Let's go squish some spiders, man. In the Cope and Seethe Water Cave, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get poisoned. The bosses here are the Kindred of Rot, which aren't all that hard. They have like no health, so just avoid their spider webs and get the win. The Servants of Rot's Exaltation will give us a 20% damage boost when we afflict a boss with poison or rot. Our whip does poison. Our our dog does rot, it's going to happen frequently. There are some other good talismans we can grab, and to be totally honest, I'm kind of tired of doing the Ronnie quest. So let's go test our new toy on Godefroy. Apply the poison, then use Catch Flame with the damage boost. It's dealing some nice damage. Easy win, giving us the Godfrey icon for boosted damage from charged spells. Gilka is also easy. She just gets rotted and poisoned and her health disappears. It takes less than 30 seconds for us to get the Ritual Sword Talisman for 10% more damage at full health. Back to the Ronnie quest, we hit the Knight's Sacred ground, grab the Finger Slayer Blade, and trade it for the inverted Carrion Statue. But I don't want to go to the Study Hall, so instead I go to the Einzel River Main to get Bolts of Sorrow, one of Jack's spells from Kingdom Hearts. We have to beat the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtilla. It has a bunch of Frost Lightning of its own, so we get Frostbit, but it's still a first try victory. Someone in the chat pointed out, I don't have to go through the Carrion Study Hall. Unfortunately, they didn't do it during this run. They did it in a future run, so I still ran through it today. Whoops. Einzel River Main, Noxtilla. Grab the Sombra Stone 7, and then we can get our casting seed to plus nine. The death right bird will not kill us again. Holy shit. Holy, holy shit. It won't kill me two more times. God, I hate that Toy Story reject looking monster. That'll give us the ancient death rank or spell. It summons a bunch of floating spooky skeletons. Let's go climb a mountain. On the way, obviously, I'm fighting the magma worm. It's a free win. Almost free. Maybe I should stop fighting this one. He's killed me an unreasonable amount of times. Does he hit harder than the one in the ruined strewn precipice? Or is it the environment that's throwing me off? Hard to say. Demi-Human Queen Maggie is basically the same as Gilka, but with a bunch of helpers. So I took them out first, then rotted, poisoned, and burned her to death for another memory stone to memorize another spell. We're here for dog food in Gelmnir Hero's Grave. I avoided the chariot on the way down, then avoided the pages by the Grave Glove Warts 7 and 6, and barely avoided the chariot on the way out. Absolutely clutch. I am not 
sticking around or going any deeper, the hero's graves are some of my least favorite areas in the game. Though there is one area that's worse. Sing the song of the sewer. Of the sewer, we sing. If we want to go into the city sewers first, we have to go into the city. That means beating the Draconic Tree Sentinel, which pretty heavily resists fire. He's susceptible to poison and rot though, so we should be fine. We died twice, but that's because I tried fighting him on horseback. I don't know if this is actually a good tip, but it's easier for me on foot. Maybe it's just because you can't use your horse for the Three Sentinel and for Amazula, so I get a lot of practice fighting him without it. Eventually, we put the rot and the poison together, and he just kind of melts. Lindell time, pumpkins in the city. I pick up Oogie Boogie's bale, the seedbed curse, then take out a Christmas tree avatar for a lord's rune before scooping up the ritual shield talisman for more defense at full health. That's all kind of the same as what we normally do, so let's do something a little different. Inside the fortified manor, there's an NFT we can right click and save before heading to the Dominula Windmill Village. I always think of Moon Knight when I come here, and hey, here's a weirdo working for a god dressed all in white. Let's fight him. Zero gets the rot, I get the poison, and phase two begins with some intense black flame to avoid. Not too bad though, getting rot and poison on at the same time is pretty brutal. After beating Moon Knight, we can walk over to the cliff that looks like the NFT we clicked and get Fire's Deadly Sin. Let's show that off against the Santa Shade. Aesthetically, Fire's Deadly Sin is the coolest spell in the game. We get to light ourselves on fire like in the opening of Nightmare Before Christmas. Now this is Halloween! While on fire, we'll slowly deal damage to people we stand next to and to ourselves. Very little damage. So, uh, aesthetically? Rad? Tangibly? Pretty bad. Basically how I feel about spells in general, actually. Morgoth is up next, and since he's not a ghost, we can summon the dog and get that rot applied. Then we'll switch to fire, and almost die before phase two starts. We held on long enough, though, and we were able to finish things off. Without pickles. I'm sorry, Bubble Bass. Kyrie Kingdom Hearts wants to burn down the big Christmas tree, and I can't think of a better way to get it lit. But losing out on those runes was a bummer, so we're gonna go do a little bit of farming. Grail in the Dragon Barrow drops a lot of runes, and he's pretty easy as long as he doesn't jank all over the place. So after a stance break, we get the rot applied, and for some reason, the Kindreds of Rot doesn't activate. Apparently, when the boss has a big body, its center of mass can be so far away that we don't get the boost. Ha 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 hopefully that's not a problem later. He janks up on a hill before the game decides to just teleport him back to the bridge. As he is about to end our entire life with the flame breath, I have no fear and I whip for one last stance break. Jack doesn't have fear. Jack is the fear. First try again. I am a little bit afraid of bears actually, so we're gonna sneak past the one in the Dragon Barrow Cave as we head down to fight the Beastmen of Faramazula. Mistakes were made. I went for the big boy and ignored the one throwing daggers. Remember, the tank wants you to hit them so you don't hit the DP. Yes. After dying, I came back and beat down the little werewolf first, then the big one was no problem. Time for poop. Into the subterranean shunning grounds, we post Oogie Boogie's bail. It's an unlikely alliance, for now. I managed to make it through the rest of the sewers perfectly, even kiting the omen by the ladder to open up a shortcut. It's amazing. Time for Locke. He's a lot bigger now and spraying blood flame everywhere. He also has 80% fire resistance and he's immune to all status effects. Fun. So I use the Bolts of Sorrow or Ice Lightning, but it keeps missing somehow, even when he's in the cone? Huh. After taking the L, I decide to go get the Lightning Spear from Crush from Finding Nemo. He's the Pope now. Kingdom Hearts is weird, although he's the Pope in this game too, so Elden Ring's weird too. That works a little bit better, especially with Oogie shrieking to lower Moog's resistances. We still died though. I just need more power. First power boost is easy, just gotta burn down another Christmas tree avatar. I can't even remember how many we've killed at this point, and we're not even done. It drops the lightning shroud to crack tier for 20% more lightning damage. The next step is getting the gravel stone seal from a pair of Lindell knights. I tried to separate them so I wouldn't get sniped by the one in the back, but I guess I underestimated the range and we took a death. Next time, I lured the guard all the way back to the fortified manage, so I should be- Oh my god, how big is your range? That will give us the gravel stone seal, boosting lightning incantations by 10% and stacking with the 20% from the tier. We can still cast from the seal that's leveled up, just holding the other seal in our other hand will still give us the boost. It's basically another talisman. Not too much to report for this fight. Oogie tanks, and we throw a lightning until Locke is dead. As long as this is the real Locke. But the devil isn't the hardest boss in the sewer, because after we beat him, we have to fight gravity. The path to the three fingers involves falling down a bunch of sticks and graves with absolute precision. I think they should just install a ramp, because I died three times. But then I made it. I'm not here for the flame of frenzy, I'm here to go through the secret wall and make my way to the deep root depths. That was the end of the stream. We'd come back next time, and it's gonna get festive.
All I want for Christmas is the Prince of Death staff, which boosts death sorceries and also scales with intelligence and faith, like our Golden Order seal. If you want to play a faith and intelligence mixed character, I have two pieces of advice. Number one, don't. And number two, use these seals. But more importantly, don't. I thought it used somber stones, but it actually uses normal smithing stones, so we need some more of those. Down to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, the spirit spring outside just didn't work. We count those as deaths, even though I wish we didn't. I am sprinting to the bottom of the cave. This run is already long, no point in making it longer. The Crystallion gets whipped really fast. It's weak to strike damage. That's what the whip does. Easy win. Then I grabbed the Bell Bearing 2 from the sealed tunnel and started leveling up our staff. A few extra runes couldn't hurt, so let's body Exazazikes with the Bolts of Sorrow. You can just throw them right at his face. It's a great spell for taking out dragons. Next, we head out of Lindell and through the Hinterlands, then up the elevator to the North Pole. There's some easy bosses we can rock for some easy runes. Under Christmas Urge Tree Avatar, who will burn down Borealis, who will electrocute. We take another L to the ultimate Elden Ring boss, Gravity, then head into the giant slaying hero's grave for a couple of things. The Grave Glove Warts 8, 9, and 10, and the Giant Seal. The Giant Seal will boost our fire damage by 20%, and we don't need it leveled up just in the other hand, similar to the Gravel Stone Seal. Up to the Castle Soul now, I'm just skipping everything and going to the shortcut. Time to fight Nile. We summon the dog and lightning the soldiers, but die. I realized I needed to kill the soldiers before summoning the dog. Now, let's spam Ancient Death Rancor, just a ton of skulls coming out, and slowly melting Nile down with the rot and poison. It's really good for this boss. At the top of Castle Soul, we get another piece of the Hallig Tree Medallion and can head to the Consecrated Snowfield to die from gravity again. <laughs> and then once to Anastasia, but we get our revenge and an Ancient Dragon Somber Stone with the cheese. Then, we cap off the Golden Order seal and burn down another putrid Christmas tree avatar. Let's watch the whole thing. Sorry, I know the build is running long, but this fight went really well. Oh, yeah, see, and it's over. There's also a magma worm that we can make fight an octopus. Let them fight. We just spam the lightning to give Octazilla the edge. Only one more quick errand. I want to pick up Terra Magica, which will boost our damage by 30% as long as we stay in a little area. Oh, and we beat another set of Crystallians again. Boss 41. That's a lot of bosses. Here's another one. It's the Abominable Snowman, and he is pissed off. Our poison takes a long time to activate. The Fire Giant has absurdly high resistances. Even after we get it off, we're too far away from the center of mass, so Rot's Exaltation doesn't activate. <sighs> Zero dies a little before Phase 2 starts, then I spam that death rancor. It's not enough. We're just not dealing enough damage despite all of our levels. Second attempt, I tried the Bolts of Sorrow, and it worked a lot better. Phase two, I broke out the poison to get some damage percentage off. Hitting the wrists is just a little too hard. Unfortunately, our poisoned armament wears off before we can even proc that poison, and we die. Again. And again. That time we didn't even make it to phase two. Bummer. Next time, I'm using the lightning. It's better. Trying to get the poison doesn't work, and the lightning can hit the face and wrists easily in phase two. It's much smoother, and we get the W. Now, we can go fight Locke. Again. That's right. There's two locks. Two locks? Eh? Huh? Kyrie gets to burn down the big Christmas tree and we head to Faramazula, where I messed up and stopped at the bait grace. Don't stop at this grace, it's just here to get you murdered. Instead, boogie to the comments section grace and clench your butt cheeks for the Godskin duo. We summon Terra Kingdom Hearts to help and get ready for the Oogie Jafar double team. The Frozen Lightning just misses again. I don't know what's going on. Did they change how it works since the Thor run? Then we take out Jafar, then Oogie returns with Jafar again, but then we take out Oogie again. Bernie just doesn't care when Oogie's back again, he's done. Godskins win, first try. Things get a little messy here. We spend all of our runes to upgrade the weapons, then head to Grail to do a dry run against the beast. We're able to get off the rotten poison, but that just doesn't melt him fast enough and we take another L. Next time we spam the Ancient Death Rancor and it works a little better, giving us Ancient Dragon Smithing Stones to cap off the whip. I thought I could step outside to kill the Black Blade Kindred, but uh, uh no. So then I went back to Faramazula and made the swag jump before deciding maybe I should take on Locke too. There are a few steps on that path. First, take on Darth Talon for the Moog tier, then the Penguin Noble in the Consecrated Snowfield, so we can warp to the Mogwin Mausoleum. I scooped up the Halig Drake Talisman for 18% Holy Resistance. We died because of that, but I don't think it's ridiculous to assume we might die a few times to the Elden Beast. I ran through the Dark Cave, getting chased by a Sanguine Noble, and y'all, look at this. Right as I leave, I instinctively jump and hop right over the Noble's knife. Spider Sense 
activated. Spider-Man Elden Ring when? Two weeks. Lock time. This version is susceptible to status effects, but like, is he though? His resistances are ridiculously high. We summon the dog and get the stance break, but no rot. Next time I tried using the poison whip to get the status to activate, but that also didn't work. Zero dies, then we do. Technically, I quit out this time, but it counts. Third try, it's also not working. After five deaths, I decided I needed to try a different strategy and scooped up the big bolts of sorrow, ancient dragon lightning strike. This time, I got a stance break with the rancor call and Zero got the rod. It was already going great. Then when he stands still for phase two, I zap him and y'all, this spell melts bosses with big bodies. It's so good. After that, it's just a matter of letting the rotten skull spam melt him into a blood puddle. Two locks defeated. So two lock, one. Bird run time, we make it through unscathed. It's nice. The Draconic 3 Sentinel isn't nice. I tried spamming the Rancor, but found myself in a healing spiral, so I just gave up. We'll sneak past him and go straight for the beast. Oh lord, he coming. But I got my dog out, and Zero gets the rod before we start spamming some skulls. It gets us to phase two, but he's not jumping like I expect him to, so I got rocked with the AoE. Next attempt, same strategy, get the dog out, spam the Rancor, get the rot, and phase two begins. Phase two is just pretty brutal. This is where spellcasters start to fall apart. Up to the Godskin duo, most bosses aren't going to rush you down so aggressively, so you can just run away and spam. Malekith is the first boss to either rush you down or spam you back, this time with the blade beams. Quitting out to despawn the three sentinel is getting annoying, and Malekith isn't as free as I thought he would be, so let's just handle it. Spam the Rancor and run away. He's on a horse, and he's not as good at closing distance as the beast. Back at it with the beast, spam that Rancor, get to phase two again, and die. Basically, I just need to keep that stance pressure up so we can break it in phase two. For some reason, the Rot sets on a phase transition, but the stance pressure does not? Why? Once we get the stance break, we can hit it with the Bolts of Sorrow to end things very quickly. It's the end of the world, and we're in Hollow Bastion. Sorry I'm pulling so much from Kingdom Hearts lore, Jack Skellington just has more screen time in that series than he does in his own series. He's the Ness of Disney. Wait, is Jack Skellington undead Ness? Game theory! Gideon Offner dies. It's just not, it's kind of not interesting, so I went on a little uh, stream of consciousness thing there. Let's go save Christmas! <laughs> Santa is our next boss, and he's mad. I can't imagine why. We've only killed seven Christmas tree avatars, burned down the world's biggest Christmas tree, and killed the abominable snowman. Oh yeah, I see why he's mad. Remember when I said Malekith was the beginning of the Castor No Fun Zone? Godfrey takes that from zero to 60, because this dude does not let you run away. Most bosses dodge when you cast a spell. It's built into their AI, and it already makes spells kind of bad. Godfrey dashes in and stomps with an AoE that comes out faster than your recovery from casting a spell. Also, also, it makes half the skulls fly behind him and hit the floor instead of hitting him. Oh no. Sometimes Zero will get the rod off in phase one, but phase two just resets it. So yeah, that doesn't work all that well. It really just gets phase point one five started faster, where his shockwaves cover the entire arena and Zero can't jump. So once that starts, it's over for our ghosty good boy. Even the slowest move in phase two, the earthquake is not enough time for us to safely get the rancor off. We have the Radigan icon on. We're casting spells as fast as we can here. Godfrey just doesn't get a toot. I'm basically just praying that the spells that end up hitting Godfrey will eventually break his stance so we can hit him with the Bolts of Sorrow. His body isn't super massive, but it's still pretty good against him. All told, he killed us 21 times. I'm not going over every run, especially because they're all kind of the same. Here's the one we got lucky on. I learned starting the fight, it was best to get Terra Magica up for extra damage, then spam three charged skulls and one uncharged skull. That'll get us close to a stance break, and then we can use that to get off the Bolts of Sorrow, keeping zero alive for phase two. Since phase two makes Santa even more aggressive, we don't have time to charge the Rancors. Hell, we barely have time for the short ones, but we still have to hit him. Zero gets the rod off, but phase 2.5 HD remix is upon us, and these shockwaves are big. We eke it out and get ready for another boss that's going to really test our Christmas spirit. Not Godric. Honestly, thought I already fought him, but no, we kill him fast for the Great Rune and boost all of our stats by five. Since we cast with intelligence and faith, that's 10 levels of damage, five levels of extra magic, five levels more of dex for fast Faster casting, five more strength levels for physical defense, five more arcane for holy defense, five more vigor for more health, and five more endurance for more stamina. We use everything. It's 43 levels on a character I'm pretty sure is the highest level character we've ever built. Time to fight the spirit of Christmas, Radagon and the Elden Beast. Radagon is susceptible to rot and poison, so I summon zero. There's no point saving him for phase two. He's basically useless against the Elden Beast. He's also not great against Radagon, though, since Radagon hits like a truck, and virtually every one of his attacks has an AoE around it. Sometimes 
sometimes he might aim for me and hit the dog. Sometimes he aims for the dog and hits me. Most of the time he hits both of us. His shockwaves are also bigger than my whip, which has the longest reach of any weapon. So yeah, that seems fair. While you can get status effects on him, his poison resistance is high. So I can't proc it with a single casting of poison weapon. I tried casting some spells, but he seriously can just deflect them, then spam you back with the light shotgun. Also, he closes distance like Godfrey. It's like he was designed specifically to ruin any cheese strat you used to get through the game so far. Real skill check feeling. After three deaths, we finally make it to the Elden Beast, and I'm spamming that Rancor, hoping to get a stance break before we can hit it with the Bolt of Sorrow. It doesn't work. While the Rancor is better than most spells at breaking stance, it's still not as good as something heavy, like a dagger or the Cestus. That was sarcasm, everyone. I know daggers and Cestus are bad. I'm making a joke about how bad spells are because spells are bad. I died. Our next attempt goes a little better. We get the Kindred of Rot boost against Radagon and start spamming spells, but yeah, he just doesn't let you cast them. Elden Beast starts again and I'm spamming, but when it uses the rings, the stance just resets. This isn't working. Attempt number nine, we get the triple rings with the Elden Stars out. The only way to escape Elden Stars is sprinting, but you have to jump over the rings, which means you can't sprint. There was no winning this one. Sometimes the game just decides you lose here. All that salt was building inside of me, and it was necessary. Hatred and anger are going to be what get us the win. Here's the final run. We poison the whip and summon the dog, but Radagon is just so aggressive. His AI also gets aggressive when you heal. So if you get hit, you're likely going to get hit while recovering from the first hit. Poison wears off of our weapon before we can proc the status. Happens every time. We get a little break from the stance break, can't crit with the whip, haha, ha, but it gives Zero enough time to stack some rot before the grab. When the big hammers come out, they're aimed at Zero. That's really helpful since we don't need him for phase two. After we clutch out phase one, I hot swapped our talismans to get the Godfrey and Radigan icons equipped. I'm not planning on playing it safe against the Elden Beast this time. I'm pissed off. Instead of trying to break the stance, I just go right for the Bolts of Sorrow. The damage is massive, boosted by the water on the ground since it increases the area of lightning. I dodged some of the melee, then lightninged again before it flew up for the rings. Hey, that means I have more time for hot swapping. Put that gravel stone seal on for more lightning damage next time we can get some lightning off. I was way off with my positioning after the rings though, but it's no big deal. Just run around, avoid the breath, avoid the nebula, avoid the melee, and get the lightning off. When it starts bringing out the Elden Star's Christmas lights, I go for one last lightning to get the win. No patience only death. We beat the game in 11 hours and 13 minutes with 49 bosses slain and 70 deaths. That's more bosses slain than any other run, which helps out with the slow time and big death count. Not a lot though, just enough to keep it in C tier, slightly above Wolverine, which is even worse considering it's behind Sephiroth, who had to fight Melania. Some of these spells are pretty good, honestly, the lightning and the fire. The ancient death rancor is situationally useful, but it just doesn't deal that much damage. Mixing intelligence and faith requires so many levels, it's just not really worth it. Rot Dog is great though. He doesn't have a lot of health, but he survives long enough most of the time to get that free status off. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join my Patreon if you want to give me some money and sub to my other channel if you like Dungeons and Dragons. I've built some characters over there too.